Well, hello there again. Brandon hanging out here at the studio. So uh, you've probably seen bits and pieces of this particular painting if you've been hanging around the channel for a while because I've done some other videos off of it. But this video is going to be my walkthrough tutorial process of this entire painting from start to finish. A little bit of time lapse going on in there. If you're new to the channel and you want to get some uh, future painting videos from me, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, let's go ahead and take a look at the process of this one now. Well now it's time to get another painting going and this time around I'm actually going to be doing a painting for my mom's birthday. So she has got a lot of bird decor I guess you could say when it comes to furnishing out her house. A lot of bird um, paraphernalia of some sort whether there be little mini figurines or paintings or whatever. So she's got a collection going of some of my bird paintings. Uh, she's got some bluebirds and some cardinals and some hummingbirds and a variety of things so what she doesn't have yet is a Carolina Wren so I'm going to be doing a painting this time around for her on a Carolina Wren and I've decided to do a little bit of a scene here with this Wren sitting up front with um, sitting on top of a post like a fence post old fence post or do a little bit of an old barn in the background maybe a dogwood tree sitting in there and um, just some background trees out there so if you've looked at much bird photography I should say uh, you'll see that there's a lot of photos out there um, like Audubon Society's uh, social media and, and people that do bird photography where the background itself is completely out of focus and just kind of blurry and the only thing in focus is the bird and I kind of like that look I guess you uh, uh, could say so some of my bird paintings if you've seen some other ones I paint them that way where I've got a background that's a little bit distant out of focus um, not a lot of sharp edges back there and then the bird itself is a lot more in the foreground in focus makes the bird pop a little bit on the canvas I think and in this scene I'm kinda gonna be in the middle of that because I'm gonna have a barn here that you're gonna be able to see and maybe a dogwood tree there and I want them to be you know visible obviously but I don't want them to be um, the main focus I want this Carolina Wren here in the front to be the, the sharpest thing, the crispest colors, and, and to be the main attraction. So what I'm going to do is paint this scene kind of like a misty morning, early morning scene where the, the background and the trees are going to be very much like off in the fog in the distance. And you'll be able to make out this barn and this tree here, but I'm not going to make them as vibrant um, in terms of the colors and the saturations as I do the birds. They're still going to be looking like they're a little bit off in the, in the fog and the mist a little bit, but you'll be able to tell what they are. Um, and maybe we'll put a piece of barbed wire running from this post here with a couple of uh, some flowers or something coming up around this post here that this, this bird's going to be sitting on. So I've sketched it in in pencil to start here. I've got my wren sitting there and I've kind of got a general idea of where I want some things. So we're going to get started on this painting. This is 16 by 20 uh, canvas here. We're going to be doing this one in acrylics. And I may play around with some new mediums that I've got here for my acrylics um, that um, make this drying time a little slower so we can do a little bit of this misty, foggy kind of background um, with some of these acrylics. And hopefully we'll be able to fade them and blend them. Uh, maybe not quite to the level I could oil paints, but um, we'll see what happens. I've never used these mediums before, so we'll see what we get. The first thing that I'm going to do, uh, which I do on almost all of my paintings, is I'm going to do a blocking in layer here in acrylics, and I'm going to be using my um, least expensive, I guess you could say, acrylics to do my block in layer, and then I do all the rest of my finishing out and detailing of the painting with better stuff. So right now I'm going to be using, these are just some basic Masters Touch acrylics, uh, stuff that you can find at um, places like Hobby Lobby and Michaels and things like that. Um, the entry level acrylic paints because all I'm doing here is a background layer so right now I'm going to try to get in the bulk of this background of what's going to be a foggy or misty looking distant tree line uh, that'll be barely visible at all so I'm mostly going to come in here to start with with 
a lot of titanium white with a touch of black and just a hint of this brilliant purple just to add a little something to it and I'm going to be using a rather large brush here to just get this background covered so we're talking a two inch this is a two inch red line by Princeton it's just a, an acrylic brush two inch flat brush that has got some fairly soft bristles to it so we're gonna paint in this whole background and we may have to adjust the colors a little bit but we'll see what we get and then once all of that is to my liking, uh, we will start on detailing out some stuff and we'll move up to some better uh, Liquitex Professional Series and Golden Soft Body Acrylics and stuff like that. So let's get moving with this block in layer. And really all that's going on here to create this sky initially is just using a larger brush here and just moving these colors around quickly before everything dries so I can blend it in and get everything nice and smooth out. Didn't really want a lot of brush strokes showing here, so just working fast before all this dries is really all I'm doing. So I'm going to try to block in this ground down here, and it's mostly just going to be a grassy kind of meadow looking deal, but again, I want to give the appearance that a lot of that is kind of off in the distance, and then we've got like this foggy, misty morning kind of thing going on. So when I add some green to this, I'm basically just going to use the colors I've been using to block in this foggy background with and just add a little bit of uh, green and some dark green to it as I move forward into the ground here. And then the color, the green, will get a little bit more saturated up here at the foreground and the front, so it'll look a little closer to you. But starting back there off in the distance, I really want that green to be um, very subdued and appear like it is off in the distance and behind a lot of fog. So we're going to take that color we've been working with, we're going to introduce just a tiny bit of green to it. And I could tell pretty early on here as I started to put this uh, grass color in that it was a little more saturated than I want. So you see me kind of adding a little bit of that um, foggy sky color to it there along the edge of the horizon to try to dull it back out a little bit. And then here in the foreground as I move forward I really bring up the saturation of the green and the darkness in some areas because I want that obviously to appear a lot closer um, to you. And then just fade those colors in. Uh, as they move back and then the post here in the foreground just laying in a lot of dark brown and black here uh, just to block that post in. Now as I move over here to this barn I'm going to be doing a block in layer here on this barn as well and I've got another video up on the channel here where I'm going through this step-by-step -step process of this here you see me mixing some uh, paint on the palette and so I do have a full walkthrough real-time tutorial of this barn on the channel if you want to um, check that out but this is again just a block in layer here putting in my darkest colors keeping my brush strokes in the direction that I intend on putting my wood um, just so if the brush strokes show up they are in the same direction as the wood that I'm going to have laying there and then uh, just introducing a little bit of red into the rust color for the roof all right I've got my initial blocking in layer here of my sky in and it is dry um, and that is basically just a, a really um, light gray kind of color there that I've blocked that in with. Now I'm going to come back in with some Liquitex Professional Series Soft Body Acrylics. We're going to use mostly titanium white again with a touch of ivory black and just a hint of this. I'm going to use just a hint of this dioxazine purple just to add a little flavor to it back there. Now one thing I'm going to do that I have not done before, I'm going to add a touch of this Liquitex Professional Slow Dry Blending Medium. I've never used this stuff before, but um, I'm going to add a touch of this in here to see if it won't help me spread and fade these colors a little better um, because it'll slow the dry time in on this. Now. Um, 
I don't know how much to use on this because it doesn't say specifically. It just says large quantities may temporarily lighten the color until dry. Um, so I guess the more you add, the slower the process. So we're not going to add much. We're going to just put a couple drops in here. What I'm going to do here is mix some of this on my little Rubbermaid lid here. So we're going to drop in we're going to drop in some of this titanium white. Just a little bit of that black and a little bit of that purple. Now let's take this slow drying medium here. Let's give ourselves just a couple drops in there. Not get too carried away. That was probably five drops of medium. And I'm going to grab my palette knife here and mix this up. Now I'm using a, a wash brush here, bringing in this um, color here for my sky and my fog here, just so I can create a misty looking effect with it as I kind of blotch it in there with that particular brush. And I just wanted to change the color up a little bit, um, just to make it slightly warmer. And then some of this area here that stayed a little darker gray, I start to use as my tree line here that's just starting to appear through the fog in the back. And this takes me a couple of passes here to kind of figure out just how much uh, visibility do I want for this tree line in the back. And I add a couple of layers in here and then determine that, well, maybe that was a little bit more color than I wanted and I didn't want that quite that visible. Um, so then I went back and, and covered it back up essentially, but that's just part of the process. I mean, this is kind of a trial and error deal where I have to put some color in and take a step back and look at it and say that it was a little more than I wanted or not enough. And so at one point here, I pretty much cover up a portion of this tree line that I put in and then start back over. And then as I'm trying to give the illusion that there's some trees closer to the back of this barn, I bring them essentially out of the mist with just more color saturation. And my thought process really in the whole time of doing this is, is ultimately at the end, if I need to, I can put a thin glaze or a wash of color of that foggy background color and cover it all up so at this point I decided I wanted to warm it up even more so you see there's just a little bit of red coming through in this color that I'm bringing back over it now and then I cover up a good bit of that tree line that I had started to make in the background because it was just a little more visible than I wanted and I also brought some of that foggy mist forward along the, the ground there along the grass in the distance to cover some of that up as well and so now as I'm working my tree line again, I'm trying to keep the colors um, very toned down for the most part until I'm getting right up close behind this barn where you would be able to visibly see what's going on. And so now I'm just putting some detail in that's some darks and lights of a little bit of yellow ochre and some raw umber in there and adding a couple of branch um, indications and tree trunk indications with a smaller brush and then essentially once I get this background tree layer here to a point where I'm happy with it in terms of the way it looks I can then adjust how much of it's visible by putting that wash of color over it at the end now I moved here to the foreground and really just trying to create the idea that we have a little bit of grassy area going on and some weeds going on down here so I'm just adding some dark shadow areas in um, making it the darkest that it is the closest to the uh, foreground here to make it appear the closest to the viewer lightening up my shadows as I move away and then if you've ever seen grass early in the morning especially when it's foggy like this the dew that kind of sits on the grass really as it gets further away from you almost starts to look kind of white in color so I just kind of left that real light green almost whitish look to that grass as it moved away and so now I decided to try to add this dogwood tree that my mom was like hey maybe you should put a dogwood tree in this painting and so I said okay well why not and again I just wanted to put the tree in and then maybe covered up a little bit with some fog if need be so I've put the trunk and branches in and then the blooms and blossoms of this dogwood tree is just a, a layer of 
basically a light gray with a little bit of a, a mix of white on top of it to create those blooms on there. And then as I move back over here to this barn, finishing up the roof, just some details in the roof to make it look like some rust going on. And then layering in these boards here along this left side. Again, keeping the brush strokes in the proper directions here of boards that I've got laying horizontally. Adding a touch of highlight to them as they move forward. Switching now to vertical boards that I'm trying to put in. Changing the color up just slightly as I'm moving across. Added a little bit of red to it touching up the lines along the bottom and just adding a couple of detail effects there at the end. Now is essentially when I'm starting to bring this misty look forward of the thin glaze so you can still see what's behind it but it's starting to cover it up a little bit uh, just to give me the illusion that that fog is indeed kind of covering up some of that. And now I've moved to a piece of barbed wire hanging on this fence. It's kind of hard to see really in the video, but I did put a piece of barbed wire hanging through off of this fence post. And I wanted to put a couple of flowers of some kind. Um, and I've seen images of this. I don't know. I didn't look it up. This is goldenrod what this is. But there's a really golden yellowish um, flower that pops up in these areas in the springtime. And so I've put some of these right here in the foreground and I've used some really thick paint right here to create a, a texture of these individual petals of these flowers to really make it kind of stand out right at the front of the canvas. So it's going to be in the foreground, closest thing to the viewer. I really wanted them to kind of stand out and pop a little bit. And then to fix this fence post here, just putting in darker shadow areas and then layering in lighter wood grain highlights just making a couple of passes of that process to create what looks like an old wooden fence post right here and um, it's really pretty simple you just kind of alternate between your lights and darks to create shadows and highlights to create that effect adding just a touch of green in there to give it a little bit of a mossy looking color to the wood in a few areas and then ultimately all that will be left here now is the wren itself and this is another thing that I do have a real-time full walkthrough tutorial of this on the channel as well if you want to follow along and paint along with this particular bird or another bird of your choice you can check that video out the process here is the same as anything else I've done it's just a layering process blocking it in with my darkest tones and then now you see me working back in all of my lighter highlight areas and details of these feathers and the tail and it's just a manner of going to smaller brushes spotter brushes now detail brushes to work in these tighter spaces and adding in the highlights when I need to add them in and creating this feather look until I finally get to the point where um, the painting is finished and I have a product that I'm happy with and I'll be delivering to my mom for her birthday this year so that is a finished product. There is our Carolina Wren hanging out on that fence post right there. And the finished painting that will be delivered here in about a week. A little foggy scene there with the Wren in the front. A barn hanging out in the background there. We're going to call it a wrap on this particular painting. Until next time, happy painting everyone.